This paper has been um, presented um, in EFA last year and EFA uh, this year, and also um, win the best quantitative study uh, at a PR academic uh, conference this year. I'm going to present next week on Monday. Um, I would just go um, directly on the topic of uh, ESG shareholder uh, engagement. Um, so comparing with the traditional shareholder voting at annual general meetings, uh, shareholder ESG engage more and more institutional investors, they prefer to engage with the firms directly. Um, the, the purpose why they want to direct directly and privately because they, some of them believe that an active ESG uh, performance might related or kind of implies with um, um, sort of uh, risks, for example, um, the um, reputational risk, reputational risk, or uh, financial risks. And they prefer uh, to engage on different sort of themes, for example, like uh, Environmental uh, issues, they, they engage on a um, social issue and, so, and the governance um, as well. Uh, this is two pictures about, uh, just take an example. Um, the picture on the left is the Vanguard chairman. Uh, it's a very big um, asset as manager in the US. They, for, as they said, they hold 5% of uh, all the public listed US firms. So they are powerful in terms of um, shareholder engagement. Um, and on the left is another uh, shareholder um, engagement um, agency. So they're gradually more and more institutional investors, they intend to uh, um, engage with the firm directly and also for, um, they believe or they gain popularity uh, because it's a kind of a responsible investment strategy. Um, so for the ESG engagement data, we are lucky to have access to this um, specialized shareholder engagement agent. So we uh, give us access to all their shareholder engagement documents, reports. Um, it's very detailed uh, engagement data, including um, the, every single talks or meetings, uh, emails with all their UST firms, all the record and the detailed record. Uh, we, have, we get all that access. Anyway, in the end, we, from uh, 2005 to 2018, we have uh, collected 1,712 engagements and targeting 573 firms all over the world. So this is the base of our um, analysis. Um, for some of uh, you might not familiar with the, the, the process of how institutional investors engage with the investing firms, um, they usually take a process like engagement process. Um, in, in, in our case, this data provider, they have a full uh, engagement process. So they gave it like milestone one to milestone two. So what is milestone one is that the institutional investor, they raise the issue to the investee firms. So they raise this issue. This is uh, uh, considered as milestone one. Milestone two is that the, the target firms Acknowledge that okay, we have these problems in our firm. So the acknowledgement of the issue is uh, considered as a milestone two, and the milestone three is that the firms actually taking actions or have new policies or taking strategies uh, to um, respond to the institutional investor concern. And milestone three, uh, milestone four is com is completed. Successful engagement is all done. So. This is a whole procedure um, of engagement. And this whole procedure um, usually takes an average for an hour over 1,000 engagement, usually takes two years, two to three years to complete a one an engagement. Um, so the top five engagement concerns are executive remun remuneration and board structure, um, climate change, board diversity, and human rights. Those are the top five themes. Um, and then the, the other themes, like e, and, and another yeah, environmental themes, could also include uh, carbon intensity, um, and for another uh, governance, uh, social themes, uh, social and ethical themes also include um, health and safety, um, and they also have some strategy risks um, themes as well. This table shows the geographic distribution of engagements. Um, so it's uh, covers um, over uh, 10 countries. 
So the most um, firms they engage are from the US, UK, Japan. So most of them are from developed countries. So this is the details of our data. So what we, we call it engagement actions is that um, it's count every single uh, letters, emails, telephones, uh, meetings, we call it um, action, uh, engagement actions. So in our data, we have collected 5,117 meetings um, and 2,000 emails and uh, almost 1,700 1, calls and 1,524 letters. And during all those uh, con uh, engagement with the investing firms, um, we contact the tax firms uh, more than 2,000 times contact with the senior management, including C CEOs. And also there's more than 1,000 times contact with the board of directors, all the directors on the board, and also over 1,500 times contact with the chairman of the board. So the, the level, the authority level of the firm is pretty, uh, the being targeted are influential as well. Uh, since this paper is studying uh, engagement effect on downside risks, so we, we choose two measures of downside risks. So the first measure will be the lower pressure moment to the second order, which uh, here in this study, we choose a threshold as a zero. So this means, this uh, risk measure uh, means the negative um, return volatilities. Um, then the second risk measure we use is value at risks. Basically, it's the worst the possible um, loss, um, um, if the lowest the five percent possible loss as a, a value at risks. Um, in this study, we to, we use two empirical uh, approaches. Uh, so the first one we use uh, every treatment effect on the treated, uh, using monthly data. Um, the second um, approach we use stock return analysis. Um, so both of these uh, approaches uh, will match will, will match the firms bef before doing further analysis. So for the target firm, what I mean target firm is that, that the firm is being engaged, and the, we will choose the, the control firms which are from the same country, same industry, and the similar size. So we, we have match uh, targets and controls before we doing further analysis. And our study context is FTSE Allward Index. So any firms in, this, in the FTSE Allward Index it can, will be chosen as control to match the engagement targets. So th this is a detail of our first methodology. So basically, the basic methodology we use difference in different structure However, we also add, um, uh, use um, inverse mass ratio or, or lambda to control the selection bias. What I mean selection bias is that the uh, institutional investor engage on the firm is not, they not engage on the firms by randomly choosing the firms. They have the selection criteria, so I call it um, a selection bias. So in order to control this selection bias, uh, we use um, inverse mouse ratio. And then we use um, entropy balancing approach to trying to align the control firms with the, the covariance of control firms with the covariance of the targets. So this approach allows us to compare apple to apple. As I already said, we, we choose the uh, controls from same country, same industry, and similar size, but there are some other factors which they might not be same. Then, for example, maybe their return probability or the leverage may, may not be the same. So this method allows us to make the control firms have a similar, similar, close, similar country, uh, firm characteristics with the target firm so we could allow us to compare directly. Um, this, is the, this is the result. Um, so it's, maybe it's a bit small, it's, it's hardly to read, but uh, I'll just uh, explain. So um, we found that for all samples, uh, we didn't, 
we didn't find the, any significant relations between engagement um, um, targets and the downside risk. However, we do find a negative relation between shareholder engagement targets with the, with, the, with the downside risk for the firms, for the engagement targets that achieved milestone three. As I explained um, before, so milestone three and milestone two is that the when it's achieved, which means the firms acknowledge their, the issues they have and also preparing or at least implementing strategies to solve this issue. So only as the firms achieve this stage, then the firms, the engagement targets um, have a less um, downside risk comparing with the control firms and comparing their previous uh, performance. Um, the second approach we use is a stock return analysis. Um, so in finance, there's a, there's a <clears throat> classical model, um, asset pricing model from a French three factor and from a French five factor. So we employ the same uh, uh, factor model. So we use from a French five, five factor model, but we also add our own, we call it downside risk factor in this model. So we integrate our downside risk factor into this classical uh, model. So we create uh, our downside risk uh, using um, weekly, using weekly return. Um, and we also choose a two year period around initial engagement. It's also a two year, uh, two year window. And we have, so in this approach, we have a two dependent variables. So the first dependent variable is a weekly target access return. The second is a weekly um, target um, access return less the control, controls returns. Um, if anybody interested with this model, I can talk to you privately. I'll just uh, quickly show you the result. So we, we found the same um, even though it's a different approach, but we also we found the consistent result, which uh, shows that the ESG um, engagement um, actually uh, create a values through a reduction of uh, downside risks. And however, just uh, just want to point out the red, um, the the letter in red. So the, for it, it shows the alpha. The alpha, which means is the is the excess return. The alpha is negative. Uh, which means might indicate that institutional investors, institutional investors might willing to sacrifice some of their retains in order to control their risks. However, this, this retain, even though it's negative, but it's not statistically significant. So, uh, which means that the institutional investor, even though they gain their values through um, the downside risk, but their retain is not sacrificed. It's the sacrifice of the retain is not realized because it's not significant. The alpha is not significant. Anyway, so the conclusion. Um, so ESG engagement um, actually uh, has a negative effect on the firm downside risks, especially um, um, for the uh, firms that achieved uh, milestone three and milestone four, and also um, th this effect is stronger when the um, uh, when they engage on the governance and the environmental issues. The other two themes uh, is less strong, uh, and uh, um, our our analysis also contributes to the new insights into the understanding of the channels how the institutional uh, ESG shareholder engagement create values. Thank you. <laughs>